Good morning. Good morning. Wow. I don't know how many people are here, but it's so wonderful to see all of you. Um, and, and there's still people coming in, and even as we are gathering for worship. A special welcome to those of you who are guests with us this morning. If you're a first time guest and not received one of our handmade wooden crosses, be sure that you get that before um, you leave this morning. I do want to make a couple of announcements. First of all, um, this begins our Holy Week celebration, Palm Sunday, and then next Sunday will be Easter, but a whole lot of things happen in between Palm Sunday and Easter. So there will be no Wednesday Lenten service um, um, you know, upload onto Facebook and YouTube, but Monday, Thursday, we, are, we will be having worship out in the parking lot at 7 o'clock p.m. It will be communion service. Um, so we're probably... Just uh, if you've never come to one of our outdoor um, parking lot services, might be a, a, a neat opportunity to be able to do that. We'll, um, we will worship together in in nature, sort of, but in our know, parking lot. And then Good Friday, we'll be here in the sanctuary at 7 o'clock in the evening, and we'll have um, sort of a modified um, Good Friday tentative worship service. And, um, invite you to come to that also. On Easter Saturday, we're going to have our regular um, our regular Saturday worship service, which is now at 7 o'clock in the evening, and because of the, just the heat and the sun. And so Easter Saturday, we're going to be having our service in the parking lot, 7 o'clock, kind of a modified Easter vigil, which is what we usually have would be modified even more because we can't do some things outside that we can inside. Sunday morning, a week from today, 7 o'clock in the morning, we will be worshiping at the far end of the parking lot by our memorial garden. We'll have um, an Easter sunrise worship service. And um, sunrise is at 7 11, so we will be out there together to welcome the new day and the, the promise of new life, too. At 10 o'clock, so exactly a week from right now, we will be meeting right in this space for Easter worship. And our numbers have been growing every week, and we don't know exactly what to expect on Easter Sunday, but we're going to have um, still the spacing. But on Easter Sunday, we're going to be singing. We haven't sung together for over a year. We're going to be doing that. I think I have a cover for my bell. Yeah, so I'm playing trumpet. Uh, looking forward to that. I was scared of it, too, because I haven't done a lot of playing in the 12 months that uh, we've been apart. Um, or not a part of it. The church never closed. We just, you know, we, we had to keep our distance and stuff. So, um, anyway, we're, we're going to have some overflow seating in the church entry, the narthex, and also probably having live streamed on the live stream TV in the fellowship hall. And um, so we'll do the best that we can to accommodate everybody. We're opening up this whole section for seating on Easter Sunday. Um, hope to see you here. That's all we need to know. I'll be so excited to sing on Easter Sunday. It's been a long time coming. Um, so this morning is a service of palms, and I have a, a, a litany for Palm Sunday, and you're invited to respond with the bold and italics um, print on the screen. Let us worship together. There's also, if you're not a regular here, we don't stand at all in our own singing today. Say that for next week. The prophet Zechariah gave hope to the people, saying, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Lord, have mercy, have mercy on us. The prophet Isaiah called for strength for the people, saying, God, through the gates, prepare the way for the people. Build up the royal highway, clear it of stones. The Lord has proclaimed to the ends of the earth, say to daughter Zion, See, your salvation comes. His reward is with you, and his recompense before him. Christ, have mercy. Have mercy on us. The psalmist invited the people to sing, saying, the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. 
Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is coming. The Messiah arrives in. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us. Um, you were given a palm on the way in. If you don't, if you don't have a palm, um, just reach out to the floor up here and grab them. But I invite you to pick up your palms right now, and uh, we're going to bless our palms. Oh, Lord God, we give you thanks for this time of worship, and we invite you to be present with us as we praise your name and glorify you. We give you thanks for these palm branches. They remind us of the joy that people felt in their hearts as they were able to throw their cloaks on the ground for your donkey to trot on, as they um, cut leafy branches from the trees and lay them on the ground as a further demonstration of their love and of their praise. We ask, God, that you bless the palms that we hold. Bless our lives as we remember. Bless this gathering of people as we, as we hear the account of Jesus coming into Jerusalem to the loud acclamations of the people. We pray for your blessings upon the whole world. Enter into every heart, Lord God, and fill each person with the promise of your love. All, things we, all these things we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. There's going to be two gospel readings today. The first gospel reading is from Mark chapter 11. This is the reading of um, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. It's the palm part of our, of our worship service. When they were approaching Jerusalem at that stage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying this colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the cloak to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went up to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We switch now to the reading of the Passion. It's important to hear this because um, this, is, this Sunday has become a combination, Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday. If your lives are so consumed by other things, and our lives can get that way, and you only worship today, you can't come on Monday, Thursday, you can't come on Good Friday, you can't get here on, on Easter Saturday for the vigil. So the next time you're here is Easter Sunday when we're singing hymns together and, 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 and hearing the good news that Christ is risen from the dead, and you miss here he's being welcomed into Jerusalem with shouts and acclamations, and then the next thing you hear, he's risen from the dead. So the combination here is important for us so that we get the whole flavor of this week as it unfolds before us. Hear the, um, hear the story of the crucifixion of Jesus. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the, and the scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused Jesus of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how, see how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? 
For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led Jesus into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole co cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed and spat on him and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. And then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each would take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we also may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him when it was noon. Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, namasabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the pastor, when the, some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran for the sponge of sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, truly, this man was God's son. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Let the people of God say together, Amen. Amen. This is the first time I've preached on Palm Sunday in a long time. Usually I do that reading um, the, uh, from the book of God, and I read it last year when we weren't gathered together. I had permission from, um, from Walter Lunger and Jr., who wrote the book of God. And, uh, but it's on there, it's still on there, isn't it? Yeah, you can go back and watch that. And um, so I'm preaching today. I'm preaching on a different reading, but it all it all ties it together. This was it's a reading of Paul, um, it, a letter to the Philippians, and and Paul wrote this after Jesus was crucified, after Jesus rose from the dead, after he ascended into heaven, after Paul was converted from. From Saul, the, the Pharisee who was persecuting other Christians. Um, this this letter was written after all of that. And Paul offers a great testimony. Paul writes, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. He emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. 
Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. There's a lot in that. Our whole faith is wrapped up right in there. Jesus, before he was born in a manger in Bethlehem, he was one with God up in heaven. And we're told by Paul's very words right here, um, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave and being born in human likeness. It means that Jesus was up in heaven with God, and he's going to return there again after his crucifixion, after the resurrection, after the ascension, He's going to return to his Father up in heaven to take his place at the right hand of God. But he left that to come to earth. He left heaven to come to earth. Now Paul, he knows that there's something in here that we need to be a part of. And so he says this, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. The same mind. Now the word mind is, is a word that can also be for thinking. Yeah? Thinking. In, the, in, the, in Bible times, it was thought that the mind was part of the soul. Usually when I think of the soul, I kind of grab from my heart because I'm heart and soul, you know? Um, that kind of thing. But in Bible times, the, the mind was thought to be part of the soul and it held on to, the mind held on to eternal truths. So if we're thinking like Jesus does, Paul says, have the, you ought to have the same mind as Christ Jesus. It means that we should be thinking like Jesus. What's Jesus thinking about? Probably not what I'm thinking about. Not, not all the time, anyway. I think about myself. I think about things going on around.
You, you know, there, there's another. So if we're thinking like Jesus, then, then our form becomes like Jesus' form. Now, we're, we're not going to put ourselves up there being in, in, in the form of God, although um, the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27 says that we have all been created in the image of God. We've been created in the image of God. So there's our, our form of God, but then we also ought to become like Jesus, think like Jesus, act like Jesus, forgive like Jesus, emptying ourselves, becoming humble, becoming obedient, becoming a servant of all. Now, it says in here also um, that Jesus emptied himself, taking the form of a slave and becoming and, and being born in human likeness. He emptied himself. Um, let me do something here. First of all, I want to explain um, water comes right out of the faucet and back. It's a regular faucet, it's a regular sink. And we pour it in here, and I pour it in here every week. And I pray a prayer. If you listen to those prayers, two things, you'll hear two things, three things. It's a gift. That's one thing. The second thing, I invite the Holy Spirit to come upon the water. Come upon the water, Spirit. And that third thing is so subtle that you would really have to pay attention. But usually my sermon theme is in that prayer, too. Yeah, something to kind of catch on to. But as I'm pouring the water, I, I love to listen to it pour. It reminds me that Jesus Christ emptied himself, right? And he became a for all people because he loved them so much. And, and not only does he empty himself, but as we think of this water as a gift from God, you know, that I'm going to resist doing all of that, but Holy Spirit, come upon the water and upon us. And then I usually do that. It's not superstitious. Christ emptied himself for our sake. Now, the water in the basin, you see it all the time, but it's very religious, isn't it? It's one of the two sacraments in the Lutheran church. What about this? This isn't, this isn't sacred. This isn't a sacrament. I have a pitcher of water and I have a cup. The cup is empty, but the pitcher is not. It's less full now than it was just a Christ emptied himself. He emptied himself, why? To fill us up. I think that's one of the reasons I come to church. One of the reasons why I became a pastor is because throughout the week I empty myself on the world. And my family needs me. I empty myself to my family. The church needs me. I empty myself to the church. Wherever I am needed, I empty myself and I come to church to be filled up. Now, this water was in the shape of the pitcher, right? And now it's in the shape of a cup. Christ emptied himself to fill me up. As I drink water which nourishes me and sustains all living things, I recognize that Christ is filling me up. Not just the cup that I hold. He's filling my body and my life to help me become like him, right? To have the mind of Christ to recognize the many gifts that this, that Christ gives to us through the Spirit. All of that. All of it. Yeah. And we recognize the gifts that Christ gives to us every week when we gather for worship and praise. And our worship and praise has been, oh man, swimmed back to the point that some people hardly recognize it. We're not doing our liturgy right now. I want to bring a path. We're not singing right now. I want to bring that path. We're not standing. I want to bring that path. We're not holding hands for the Lord's Prayer. I want to bring that path. We're not um, sharing the peace. I want to bring that path. We're not even having the, the wine of communion, although we're told that, that Christ is still with us in the, in the one kind, is what it's called, one kind. We get the way for the body of Christ. And because Christ said, take and eat, this is my body. We're receiving Christ. 
It's the bread, it's not the wine. It's the, the body, but not the blood, but it's still Christ. And Christ is within us. It's good enough for now. It is enough for now. But I want to bring the blood of Christ back. I want to bring it all back. I want to have a worship celebration that lasts an hour like it used to. Okay, an hour and ten minutes like it used to. Because I like to preach. When my sermons get long, I just tell people it's because I love Jesus so much. It's true, too. Christ emptied himself. Why? He didn't have to. God can save the world a different way. And yet, when we recognize the incredible love that God has for us, that he did send his only son into the world and set, who sacrificed his life who gave up his life so that we will live. He came down so that we could be raised up. He emptied himself so that we would be filled. That's the kind of God we have. The God who brings life from death, who brings hope from despair, who brings promise from brokenness. And this is the God who calls you right now today to have the same mind as Christ Jesus, to think like Jesus. To see that thinking like Jesus means to act like Jesus and forgive like Jesus and serve like Jesus. That's our call, that's our invitation, it's our commission today. Have the same mind of Jesus Christ who emptied himself. And pouring himself out for us, he became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. Through this holy week, know that this gift has been given for you personally. Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago because you were worth it. And we celebrate and we recognize that at the beginning of Holy Week, the people rejoiced in, in welcoming Jesus. And, at the, and during the week, they turned on him. They cried out for crucifixion. By the end of the week, a week from today, when we gather, we're going to sing for the first time in over a year. We're going to sing the praises of a risen Lord. There's triumph on the welcoming of Jesus into Jerusalem, and on the other side of this terrible week, there will also be triumph over death. We recognize that in between, there's a lot of difficulty. A lot of difficulty in our lives, too. But I think um, Holy Week, starting off with Palm Sunday, helps us to see that the beginning can be triumphant, and the end can be triumphant. It can be. And we face those difficulties in the middle, in the middle of our life, in the middle of this week, in the middle of any situation in our lives where we're going to experience difficulty. And as we do, we know that Christ has gone there before us, and he has called us to follow after him. And each of the opportunity, or each of those occasions of difficulty are opportunities for us to rise up and face those opportunities with the heart and the mind of Jesus Christ, serving one another and, and, and becoming servant of all as we are disciples of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. God of glory, we pray for all Christians who today raise palms and hear the story of your passion. We pray for humility as we confess you, Lord. We pray for our Jewish brothers and sisters as they begin their Passover celebration, that they may experience your presence in this meal of remembrance. Lord, in your mercy, make us a new creation. Rock of ages, in creation all life springs from death. Redeem your creation awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change and grant relief to those who met disaster in the pathway of devastating tornadoes and flooding rains. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. God, Amen. In creation. God of our salvation, we pray for the nations, for peace among all, especially those who honor Jerusalem as holy ground. We pray for all who hold positions of authority and power, we pray for all who suffer oppression. We pray for those who are refugees and migrants. We pray for those who serve the armed forces. Lord, protect and bless all. Lord, in your mercy. Make us a new creation. Healing God, we pray for those who have been deserted and we pray for their deserters. We pray for victims of crime and for, for persons on death row. We pray for those who are ill. We pray for all who are grieving the loss of loved ones, especially as, remem as we remember the events in Boulder, Colorado, and in other places where violence has prevailed for this short blast, this short time. We pray for all those who care for the, for the dying, for nurses and doctors, hospice workers, and funeral directors. Lord, in your mercy, make us a new Blessed Lord, we thank you for all the saints who cried out, Hosanna to the Lord in life, and who now rest in your everlasting light. Bless us with their memory and sustain us by your word. Lord, in your mercy, and make us a new creation. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, I invite you to take just a moment to Think about your own need for forgiveness and your own need for reconciliation. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we want to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Amen. Beloved God, beloved in the Lord, God's word never fails. The promises rest on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and the power of God, all your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journeying in the way of Jesus, let us pray as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go ahead and take off your um, communion way for the body of Christ, which has been um, blessed ahead of time before the service. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Take and eat. And now may the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace and through life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction. 
May God, who has call, called us forth from the dust of the earth and claimed us as the children of light, strengthen you on your journey into life renewed. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Mark with the cross of Christ, go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.